Hey guys, welcome to part two of the grid tutorial. Uh, in the last one, we set up all of our variables and all of our functions. And in this one, we're going to go ahead and start uh, working on the actual code itself. So if we come back here to the construction script, uh, you can also access it over here on the left. Uh, this is where the bulk of our code is going to live. So I'll try to explain this as best as I can. I have it broken down, I think, in a pretty good and understandable way, but there is a lot to this, so just try to stick with me and make sure you uh, follow along well. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna create our materials for our grid. Um, so drag in create material instance, and again, this is a function that we just made. Uh, it's not filled out yet, so we're gonna have to do that um, in a second. And we're gonna want to set, we're gonna wanna do this twice. So actually just drag this in twice because we want uh, different materials, one for the grid itself and one for the selection. And again, the selection being the little square that shows up when you hover over a tile. So the first create material instance is going to take in the line color because it's gonna be for the line itself. And it's going to take in the line opacity. And the next one is going to take in the selection color and the selection opacity like so. Um, and so yeah, so we need to go in and fill out this function because currently it's not doing anything or it's not returning anything to us. So double click on this and we'll come in here and we will actually start editing this. So basically what we want this function to do is create a material instance for us that we can apply to both our grid and to our selection. So you're going to want to right click and say create material instance or sorry, not that, that's the function we're already in. Create dynamic material instance. Yeah, make sure you get uh, this one, create dynamic material instance. And the parent is basically the material that we want to create the instance from. And we don't actually have one yet because uh, we need to go create one. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that right now. Uh, it's gonna be really simple if you never created a material before. Um, it should still be really simple for you to follow along and figure out what to do. So we want a material that allows us to set the color of it through code because that's what allows us to change the color of the grid uh, in the editor. So if we right click right here and create a new material, we'll call this M underscore grid because it's for our grid. And if you double click on this, you can open it up for editing. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is on the left here, change it from opaque to translucent. And this is just gonna allow us to um, have um, a opacity pin. So it's gonna allow it to be uh, opaque if we want it to. And we're only going to create two things in here. We're going to, um, you can actually hold down the three key on your keyboard and then left click. You can also create this by typing uh, constant three vector. It does the exact same thing. But you want to create one of these and go ahead and hook it up to the base color. And if you hold down the one key and left click, it will create a um, constant variable with, a, for, with one. You can also do that by typing constant and just selecting the top one here, like so. So these are two variables, and this is going to be our opacity. Um, but we want these to be parameters so that they can be set from outside, um, you know, like in our code. We want to be able to set these. So if you right-click and convert to a parameter, you can actually give it a name. So click on it, and then on the left here, we'll say that this is the color. And do the exact same thing for this guy. Right-click and convert to parameter. And this is the opacity, if it lets me type. Opacity. All right, so now we have a color parameter and an opacity parameter hooked up. Um, I'm gonna set some default values on these just so it's not black and completely opaque. So set this to 0 0.5, and I'm just gonna set the color to like maybe a green color, like so. Green, yeah, there we go. And then we'll hit apply and save just so it gets fully saved. So you can see this is like our default color. Um, you can really set it to whatever you want because we're gonna override it anyways. So, all right, so now we have our material that we want to use. So go ahead and just close this uh, after you saved it. And back in our grid, we're going to say that the parent material is our M underscore grid. And don't put anything here for the name. We don't need that. Um, so we want to take this return value and we want to set the parameters for it. So if you say set parameter um, vector parameter, uh, we can actually use this to set the color. So this value right here um, is going to be our color that gets passed in. So drag that in like so. And I'm just going to try to make it a little neater. Like so. 
and the parameter name is saying, okay, what um, parameter inside of this material do you want me to set um, this value on? And like, if you go back to the material, which I accidentally had you close, but uh, if you open it back up, you can see the color is the name of the parameter for the color. So that's what we want to type here. So we'll say color. So it's basically setting this color parameter inside of this material to this value. And the other one, of course, is this opacity. So uh, I'm going to create a little reroute node just so we can make this nice and neat. And we'll drag this around. And we want to do that one more time. So we'll say set um, scalar. And we want to use scalar this time because it's just one value. It's not a, it's not a color which has um, you know, like an x, y, and a z, which is why we need a vector. So in this case, we're just going to say set scalar parameter. And of course, this value is going to be our opacity. So we say opacity. Because remember, this is what we called it in our material. And that is going to be our opacity. So we can drag this over. And again, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit so it looks a little nicer. Double click to create these little reroute nodes. All right. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to return this, um, material, this dynamic material instance that we created. So if you drag off of this and then drag it back over here. Oh, nope, nope, don't do that. Control Z. Um, I'm not sure why that didn't work. Just click on the function name and hit the little plus button. That'll create us a return node. And the type that we want is material instance dynamic. Make sure you click material instance dynamic and not any of the other ones. So material instance dynamic. And we will call this our material instance. And hook that up. And then drag this in like so. And there we go. So that is our return type. So again, I know I kind of mucked that up a little bit. Just make sure you only have two parameters, color and opacity, over here. And you have one return type, and it is of type material instance dynamic. And then make sure you return the material instance that you created. All right, so compile save that, and we'll go back to our construction script. So now we are creating the material instance for our lines. And we want to actually save this. So if you right click on the return type and say promote to local variable, it will create a local variable for you. And we want it to be local because uh, there's really nobody else who needs access to this other than inside of this construction script. So if that's the case, it's just best to make it local. And we want to rename this. So click on it down here at the bottom and hit F2. And we want to call it line material instance, since this is the one for our lines. Actually, lines plural technically is more appropriate. Lines material instance. And hook this up. So that's our line material instance. And then again, we're creating one for the selection color. So right click and we want to do the same thing promote to local variable. And we will call this one the selection material instance. All right, so now we have our material instances created. Um, that's like the first thing we want to do just to kind of get it out of the way. We're going to end up using these here in a bit, but for now, uh, that's all we need to do. So at this point, we're going to start to actually create the grid itself. Um, and as you might imagine, that is going to be a little, <laughs> a little bit of work. So again, just to kind of explain what we're going to do before we actually go and do it. Uh, if you look at the other project and you look at the grid here, you can see, again, it's just a bunch of lines. So we got a line here, a line here, a line here, a line here. So we want to create uh, a bunch of lines going you know, left to right. And then we want to create a bunch of lines going from the bottom to the top. And we want to do that based on the number of rows and the number of columns they specified. Because if they change the number of you know, rows to five, then obviously we want to create less lines going up, right? And the other thing we want to do is, well, actually, we won't go into that right now. We'll just start with the lines. <laughs> Keep it simple. So go back to the construction script and we're going to create a sequence node. So hold down left, or sorry, hold down S as in Sam and then left click. You can also right click and type sequence to pop it up. But we want to create a sequence node because we're going to be doing uh, a couple, a good amount of things here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the lines and we're going to break this down into the horizontal lines and the vertical lines. So drag this out and we're going to do a for loop. Make sure you do for loop, not the for each loop. So for loop. And we want to first, um, like I said, we want to first, we want to do the horizontal lines. So 
if you think about it, the amount of horizontal lines, like going left to right, uh, the amount of those that we want to create is based on how many rows there are. So we're going to go from zero to the number of rows. Um, and this is probably a good time to set these default values because currently it's set to zero. So if we click on rows, we'll just default it to 10 just so we can see it working. Columns will also default to 10. Uh, tile size will default to like 200. Uh, line thickness, we should default to like 10. Uh, line color, we'll make it like a nice green color. Uh, selection color, we'll just go with like white, like that. And the opacity, we'll set to one for both of these, for line and selection, just, just for now. Again, you can default these to whatever you want, but just so we can see it um, working, we'll, we'll just default them to that. All right, so again, we're creating the horizontal line, so we want to loop over the number of rows, because that determines how many we want to create. Um, and the first thing we want to figure out is where this line is going to start. So I'm going to create a local variable and it's going to be called line start and it is a float and it's a float because we really only care about um, the uh, x value of this because all of these lines are going to be on the same plane. So the only thing that's going to be increasing is the x value as they get further away from you, right? So to calculate uh, the line start for this particular instance of the line. It's pretty simple. It's just the index we're on um, times a float. So do type float times, and we want the tile size like so. And then that is going to be our line start. So set this to our line start. So if you kind of think about it, you know, when the loop first starts, index is going to be zero, so it's going to start at zero, and index is going to be one, so it's going to be one times the tile size, which is 200, so it's going to go 200. So it's basically going to go like, you know, zero, 200, 400, 600, and so on. And then we want the line end, and the line end is going to be, um, again, we're talking about only on the, um, or let me think. Yeah, so the line in, we need to know how far the line goes. Um, and since we're doing horizontal lines, we want it going from left to right. So we're thinking about how far the line goes to the right. And that's going to be pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and create a variable for that as well. We'll just call it uh, line in. And the line in is just going to be whatever the size of the grid is, like how wide the, the grid is itself. So that's why we created this grid width function. So we'll drag that in. Um, oh, and we haven't actually filled it out yet. So we can go ahead and do that right now. So double click on grid width. And we'll fill this one out. This one's uh, going to be pretty simple. It's just the width grid, if you think about it. It's the number of columns that are in the grid um, times, so float times, the uh, tile size itself. So, you know, if there's if there's 10 columns and each, um, each tile is, you know, 10 units wide, then it's going to be a total width of 100, which is what it's going to return to us here. So that gets us the grid width. And the other one we want, we'll just go ahead and fill out the grid height as well, because it's basically the same thing. It's just the number of columns this time. And we'll do four times again. And this time, this is the tile size. And go ahead and drag this up, like so, and we'll return that. So yeah, so we got our grid width and our grid height being calculated for us. So we can go back to the construction script. And so now we have our grid width, and it's returning to us the grid width and this is going to be our line end so we got our line start and we got our line end and now we want to call our little create line function that we created um, over here so drag this guy in and as you can see it takes in a bunch of parameters um, the line start and the line end we're gonna want to split these so we can set the X Y and Z's independently and we're gonna want it to start um, at the start location on the X. So drag in our line start. And again, this is for the X only. So we'll say X. And then it's also gonna end at the same X because it's going horizontal, right? So the X never changes. So we want it to start and end at the same X location. Uh, and we want it to start at a Y, or yeah, at a Y value of, z of zero because it's gonna start, you know, uh, all the way to the left, right? But we want it to go all the way to the right, which is our line end. So drag in line end for our end y. 
So again, we got line start going to the start x and end x, and we got the line end going into our end y. And the z's we just don't want to touch because we want them to be at zero. All right, and then the thickness is going to be our line thickness since we're making lines in this case. Um, and then we need our vertices and our triangles. And for these, all we really need to do is, again, like I was saying before, if you remember, this function is really only filling out these values. It's not actually like expecting us to provide anything uh, useful. It's going to be filling them out. It's going to be like appending to this array for us inside of this function. So really all we need to do is right click on these and promote it to another local variable. And we will call this um, ft to rename it. We'll call it line vertices. And if we right click on triangles, we'll do the same thing and call it line triangles. All right, so again, this function is empty. We'll come back and we'll fill this up in a bit. But that's what we need to do to create our horizontal lines. So if I, I'm just going to put a little comment on this. So create horizontal lines. I think I spelled that right. Well, actually, so we should probably call this create horizontal line geometry because it's not really creating the lines quite yet. It's just creating the geometry for the lines. It's basically just filling out the line vertices and the line triangles um, is basically what this is doing. And I'm going to drag this up here because we're going to need a good amount of room to fit all of this stuff. All right. Um, and then after that, we want to create our vertical lines. So very carefully, we will copy all of this and paste it down here below. Oops, I don't want to, I just want to paste it without dragging. All right, there we go. So paste it down below and we'll hook this up like that. And we're going to rename this comment to say vertical lines and then really make sure you uh, fall along right here because otherwise this could really mess you up if you don't uh, replace things correctly. So number of columns we want to replace with the number of rows. You can actually just drag this on top of it and you'll get this little check mark that says change node to number of columns, which is exactly what we want. And then this part's all okay. Uh, this part's all okay. We can reuse these local variables, except right here we want to use the grid height instead of the grid width since we're doing vertical columns. So we'll say grid height and we'll drag that. Oh, I guess that doesn't work. We'll just drag that in and put that, hook that up like that. So yeah, make sure you have grid height down here. And on the right here, we want to change this a little bit. So we want the line start to be used for the Y since we're doing vertical lines and we want to remove it from the X. Uh, and a, you just alt left click to undo something like you just alt left click like that and we'll undo it. Just FYI. And I'm just going to uncheck all of these so it's a little easier. <laughs> so we want the start line to go into the Y. Uh, we also want it to go into the end Y just like we did before with the X's. And in this case, we want the end to be hooked up to the end X. And thickness can still go into thickness, and vertices and triangles can still stay hooked up as so. So again, make sure you did that right since we copy and pasted it. Copy and pasting is always a dangerous game to play. All right, so now we got our geometry created for our horizontal lines and our vertical lines. And that geometry um, is going to all be stored inside of these two variables. And I'll explain exactly what these are, but for now, just know that this is the geometry that our procedural mesh component is going to need in order to draw these lines it's going to draw them as one giant mess, mesh and that's why it's so optimized because it's not even drawing individual lines it's actually drawing it as one giant mesh so it's just one draw call and boom you have all 2.5 billion tiles drawn uh, it's pretty great so now that we have that um actually probably at this point we should go ahead and create the or fill out the create line function and then we'll because uh, the other thing we have to do down here is we have to create the geometry for the selection itself like the little tile that draws inside of a tile when you hover over it. But we don't really need to do that yet. Um, we can create this function or write this function and then you can actually see the grid show up. So it's a, a nice little milestone to get to. So we'll go ahead and do that. So double, to, double click on create line so we can go ahead and start editing it. And this is really the, the heart of everything. Um, this is like the most beefy function that we're gonna have. Um, so try to bear with me, I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So we're going to start out with a sequence node, so I'll hold down S and left click, and it's going to create a sequence, and um, the first thing we're going to want to do inside of here is we want, we're going to need to know the half thickness of this, 
And just to help us out and make things a little bit easier, uh, I'm just going to create a local variable for that. So create a local variable and call it uh, half half thickness. Yeah, we'll just call it half thickness. And right click and say get thickness, which again is just this variable right here. And we want to float divide that by two to get half of it. And we'll set that. And we're just doing that up here so that we can easily access it later without having to do a division later, just to make things a little clear and easy to read. And one other thing we wanna do up here in the top part of the sequence is we want to figure out the thickness direction. So I drew a picture, actually now that I remember it, to show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, and I just need to find it. Is this it? Nope, that's Minecraft. Uh, ah, grid.png, okay. So, as you can see here, um, this rectangle represents a line. So, as you can see, this line is made up of two triangles. It has this triangle on the top left, and it has a triangle on the bottom right. All right, so it's two triangles that make up a line. Um, and this line, as you can see in blue here, it has a thickness to it. And that is the thickness that I'm talking about um, when I when we pass in this variable over here. That is the thickness we're talking about. It's the thickness of the line itself. So now it thinks I want to watch Minecraft stuff. No, go back. Okay. And the thickness direction, indicated purple, is the direction that the line is expanding in, right? So it's the, it's the direction that the thickness needs applied to. So that's what I'm kind of talking about there. Uh, and I'll leave this open for reference, but that's basically what that is. So in order to create, in order to calculate that thickness direction, um, we need to do a little bit of quick math here and I'll try to explain it the best I can, but basically you want to draw a line from like an imaginary line from uh, the starting point to the ending point. And then you want to take a cross product with that, with the world up vector, because technically we're looking at this line as if we're a bird's eye view. So we're looking top down at this line. So if you imagine a line going from the start to the end, and then you imagine another line coming directly from the line up to your face, like out of the screen, and then you take the cross product of those two lines, it will give you a line that's perpendicular to those two lines, which in this case will be this thickness direction. So as I was just saying, we want to take the in position. So type in location or get end, I think, yeah, get in, scroll, 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 which again is just this guy. And we'll say minus the start position. So type get start. And if you subtract these two points together, which is just, you know, our end minus our start, it will give us a vector um, from the start to the end. And then we want to normalize this so that it's a unit vector of just one length. And then we want to take the cross product of that with the up vector, which of course is just zero, zero, one. So type a one in for the Z. And this is gonna be our thickness direction. So we can right click on this and promote to a local variable. And we will set it like so. And we will rename it to thickness direction. And we will need this just here in a few minutes when we start uh, creating the line geometry itself. All right, so now we kind of got a couple of little variables that are gonna help us out. We'll just move these over to the right. And now we can start doing uh, the real beef of the program. So as you can see, there's two other things we passed in here that we haven't used yet. There's the vertices and the triangles. So we're basically gonna be appending to both of these. We're gonna be adding vertices and we're gonna be adding triangles um, that represent the line. So just like I was saying before, each line is made up of two triangles. So you can see on the top we have a triangle and on the bottom we have a triangle. And each triangle is made up of three different vertices. So you can see I have a zero here, I have a one here, and I have a two here. So is my, I just wanna make sure I'm capturing this. Yeah, I am, okay. So each triangle is made up of three vertices. Uh, the top triangle is made up of vertices um, I guess two, one, and zero, because when you're creating a triangle, they need to be, as it shows up here, uh, counterclockwise. So if you draw, if you imagine, if you, or if you like follow my mouse, and we start on two, and then we go over to one, and then we go over to zero, 
that is a triangle, right? And it's going counterclockwise. We can do the same thing down here to create this triangle. We're going from vertice 2 to vertice 3 to vertice 1, and then you know back to vertice 2 again. And again, that's counterclockwise. So those are the vertices that make up our triangle. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create um, two different two different triangles here. So we basically want to know. Um, I, I don't know how to explain this. This is really confusing. I'm just I'm just going to start doing it, and then I'll explain it after I'm done because. I don't think I can explain this before I start doing it if you're not super familiar with this. So we want to get the vertices, which is which is just this, and we want to get the length of it. And again, I'll try to explain this as best as I can once I get it done, because it's kind of confusing. And we're basically, the first thing we're going to do is fill out these triangles. So get the triangles, and we want to say append, because we're going to be appending to the list of triangles. Um, and what the triangles actually is, um, it's not, they're not actually really triangles inside of here, because again, this is just a vector of, or sorry, this is just an array of integers. It's actually um, an array of integers, and the integers represent the um, the vertices in the triangle. So it's going to be like the first set, or the first entries inside of um, triangles, for example, in this case, would be 2, 1, 0, like the number is 2, 1, 0, because it's saying, okay, the first vertice of our triangle is 2, the second one is 1, and the third one is 0. So we would we would add to that array 2, 1, 0, and that's going to create the top triangle. And then for the next triangle, we would add 2, 3, 1, and that's going to create the second triangle. So we basically want to say whatever the size of our vertices currently is, um, we know that we're going to create a total of 6 new entries into this triangle list. So we'll say uh, plus, because we want to add to whatever's currently in there. So plus um, two in this case. And again, I'll, it's two because we're going to start at two. We're going to go two, one, zero, and then we're going to go two, three, one. So start at two, and then hook this up. And then this one is going to be, so the next one we go two, one, zero. So the next one's going to be one. And if you're thinking to yourself, this is kind of insane, uh, yeah. But this is really the only way to do it. Um, it's actually a really good solution, in my opinion. It's just kind of confusing if you're not super familiar with this stuff. And the next one's going to be 0, because we're going, again, 2, 1, 0. We need to go in that order to create this top triangle. And then we can just copy these, because we're going to do it one more time. So that's the top triangle indices. And hook this up. Oops. And we want to create the bottom triangle indices. And, of course, they go... 2, 3, 1. So we're going to say 2, 3 on this one, and 1 on that one. So these are the indices to our triangle for this specific line that we're on. And we need to make these into an array. So we'll say make array. And add, 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 add to get all of these. And just add that like that. All right, so these are all of our triangle indices, and we want to append that to the current array of indices. And I'm just gonna kind of make this a little nicer. Okay, so these are our triangle indices. So we're basically telling it which indices to use for this triangle. And then after that, we have to fill out the vertices themselves because it doesn't actually know like where two is or where one is or where zero is. Um, so that's the part we need to do next. So we basically want to create um, four of these vertices because again, each each line has four vertices, one in each corner, right? So we're gonna do um, we're basically gonna be adding to vertices again, or yeah, we're gonna be adding to vertices. So we'll say get vertices. And we'll say append, and we'll drag this in like that. And basically, we need to create uh, four of these. So we'll say make array again, and we want to have room for four. So click that little plus pin four times, and we need some good amount of room to do. So I'm going to drag this down here <laughs> right now. And we basically want to create, like I just said, four vertices. So the first one we're going to create is this one here in the top left, which is uh, vertex zero. Um, 
And we kind of need to do a little bit of math because we have the start position, which is this little orange dot. It, that gets passed down to this function. Um, but we want this position up here in the top left. So it's really going to be our start position plus half of the line thickness in the direction of uh, the thickness direction. So like I just said, it's going to be the get start and then plus, so vector plus, and it's plus the thickness direction. So the thickness direction, and we want that times the actual half thickness itself, like so. So this value is our vertex zero location. So that's gonna go right into there. And again, it, this is vertex zero, so it's the one on the top left. So it's our start position plus half of the thickness in the thickness direction, which is, you know, if you look at this, hopefully hopefully I'm explaining this well. I'm trying to do this as best I can. It's the start location plus half of the line thickness in this direction. So it's going to go up. So it's going to go to the top left corner. So that's our vertex zero. And then we want four more of these. It's going it's to be pretty much the same thing, just a little, uh, you know, minus instead of plus and whatnot. So let me just go ahead and copy this. And we'll say rename this to vertex one. So if you look at the picture, vertex one is in the top right corner. So it's gonna be the in position plus half of the line thickness in the thickness direction, right? So we'll say um, get end, which again, the end is just, you know, this value that gets passed in here. So instead of start, we want end. So delete start and we'll plug in end. But other than that, it's the same thing, right? It's uh, plus half the line thickness. Hook that up like so. And the next one we want is vertex two, which is down here in the bottom left. So it's gonna be the start position, but it's gonna be minus um, the half the line thickness in the thickness direction, because we wanna go down this time. So I'm just gonna copy vertex zero again and rename it to vertex two just so we're staying clear about what's happening here. And instead of a plus, like I said, we want to do a minus, so we'll do vector minus, and like so. And that goes into our third. And again, if you're thinking that this is like a crazy amount of stuff and like how can this possibly be performant, this is all happening in the construction script. So it's all happening before the game even starts playing. So it's, even though it, it could take it a few seconds to make 2.5 billion tiles, which, you know, who can really blame it? It's 2.5 freaking billion tiles. But even though it could take a while, potentially, it's still like once it's there, it's done and your game is going to run like super smooth. Um, and then we need one more for Vertex 3, which is in the bottom right. So it's at the end position and it's minus the line thickness, the half the line thickness, right? So we'll just copy this one since it's pretty close. And we'll call it, uh, come on, call it vertex three. And it's the in position, except we want minus, right? So minus. And we will drag this up to there. So now we have um, an array of all of our vertices that we're going to be adding for this particular line. And they get added to our vertices, like so. All right, so that is actually it for this function. Um, and I'm probably gonna end the tutorial, or not end the tutorial, but end this video right here. But just to recap, to make sure um, you guys got this set up correctly, because this is a really important function, and just to try to re-explain things, because I know it's a little confusing. I'm trying to do my best to explain it. But So when they create a line, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna calculate a few things, like the half the line thickness, and the direction that the thickness needs to be applied in. And then the real meat of it is when we come down here and we say, okay, so we need to add six indices into our array of triangles to tell them to tell the computer which uh, vertices make up the triangles. So again, we add two one zero and then we add two three one. So we're adding two one zero, which is creating that triangle on the top, and then we're adding two three one, which is creating the triangle on the bottom. And then we need to tell it where are you know, zero, one, two, three, where are these vertices? Like, what is the position of these vertices? And so that's what this is doing. When we append to vertices, 
we're getting the actual positions of the vertices based on the start and the end position that they specified for the triangle. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments because I know it's a little confusing, but really this is absolutely the best optimized way to do this in my opinion. Um, so that being said, I'm going to end this one and we're going to go uh, continue it in the next one.